Hey guys, Lancer here. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for joining me while we'll looking to some more MTG market movers for the day and possibly for the week. I'm also going to cover the spoilers. I think they've been out for a couple of days, anyways, or even longer than that. I've just noticed them now for um, Warhammer 40k deck, or at least the five cards that they've spoiled, and also obviously revised dual lands because that shows the market as it is for the reserve list cards and probably the health of the market overall. Um, with the limiting of supplies, etc., that Wizards of Coast does for the new market, it's actually easier to go back and look at the existing market, like reserve list, and see what it's doing right now. Currently, it looks pretty stable, but we'll see how it goes. So, starting off, let's get right into Standard. Now, I don't think Standard is going to be anything crazy. We've got, obviously, the new set, then we've got pretty much uh, Kamigawa, and that's going to be mostly what's going to be bouncing around so i'm not too focused on that there are some sets that are going to be rotating out soon so obviously there's going to be drops from that but moving on to modern modern is a big one look doubling season already four percent gain just today but let's go to the other side which is the weekly and see what has dropped so ulamog kozlak uh surprised to not see emrakul on this list but all of them were printed as part of double masters dropped a slight amount five percent four percent um ink eyes servant of oni dropping down by eight percent and i said a 27.49 that's already a crazy amount for that card anyways blood crypt six percent dropped and i said at 37 dollars red and six also part of the double masters three percent drop nothing crazy wargate search your library for a permanent card with converted mana cost x or less and put into play then shuffle your library uh, okay i'm not 100 sure why that's dropped by 16 percent, but maybe it was reprinted the gains for the week Endurance, 9% gain, to now sitting at $47. Living End, 24% gain, to now sitting at $19.85. That's crazy. Why is that? Uh, must be picked up by Modern. I have a Commander deck that might use it, but everyone can see it from three turns. It's actually kind of painful to play. Subtlety, 36% gain, to now sit at $13.98. All of these are insane. Endurance, Subtlety, the other ones that are all free use um, for abilities it's just and the fact is it's an ability so it's very hard to counter unless you have the right card in hand so i'm not 100 sure exactly what wizard coast thought when they printed it but no surprises yogmoth ran a physician now catching up with his arch enemy uh four percent gained an asset of 41 dollars and 83 cents actually wait would yogmoth be the arch enemy or would that of um Urza, or would that just be uh what's his name uh the other guy from the brothers war um because I actually think that Urza might hate Yogmoth just as much as his brother, but you know, it's hard to tell. And Urza is on here as well, 3% gain, and I said at $55. Phyrexian Obliterate, obli Obliterator, 5% gain, and I said at $44.49. Uh, $44 I truthfully, that's a, I, I just don't like playing that card and having that card played against me, but there are ways to destroy it without dealing damage to it, so I guess nothing crazy. Doubling season, $86.33 for the week. Balefire Dragon, $29.68. Crazy. Thought season, another 7% gain to NASA at $24.58. Really, the biggest, like, the market has not slowed down by nearly as much as how fast it's still going up. Like, Living End and Subtlety already going up by 24% to 36%. Like, that drowns out most of these cards on the other side. I know that they're heavy hitting, but like the price is still balancing out pretty well. And if we go to um, the Pioneer, I think you're going to notice that Emrakul, uh, I was hoping that the other two uh, Eldrazi's would also be on here. Literally, the fact that they were not printed in part of Double Masters meant that they just spiked because I don't know, I think anyone was expecting them to be printed, but apparently people wanted them to be printed. So. What is going on here? Modern, modern, commander. Okay, sure. It doesn't look like any specific reason why it's changed so much, but it does look like it's biked in a bought out kind of look. Like if, you, if I'm looking at it, it looks like someone just went, buy that, buy that, buy that, buy that. And I don't know, maybe they're trading on top of each other. Maybe they're selling batches to each other. But it does look like this market's uh, this card is going up pretty aggressively. So Pioneer, 
And recall the promised end, 25% gain to Nasdaq at $85.46. Crazy, Tower of the Peaks, 11% gain to Nasdaq at $34.65. Yeah, that card is not going to be easily um, easy to buy. Cigarda's Aid, 17% gain to Nasdaq at $7. Helkai Tyrant, 11% gain to Nasdaq at $9.60. Other than that, Indomitable Creativity, $9.16, 19% gain. Destroy X target artifacts and or creatures for each permanent destroyed this way. Its controller reveals a card from the top of his or her library until an artifact or creature card is revealed and exiles that card. Those players put that exile card into the onto the battlefield. Okay. It's kind of like Chaos Ro uh, Wrap, warp, warp, sorry. Chaos Warp, but for your creatures and their creatures and an amount of X. Kind of cool. You could use it to like switch your board around. It's sorcery, but so uh, you could still try to do it, maybe with Bidak or Ori or something. Switch your board around to something a bit more durable or stronger. Dra uh, token, decks, token decks might love it. Dragon Lord Dramorka, 10% drop to Nasted at $17.52. Boss printed in Double Masters. Smother and Tithe printed in Double Masters, 4% drop. Liliana the Last Hope, 7% drop, $14.93. Alenda the Dust Rose printed in Double Masters, 7% drop. Crucible of the Worlds, negative two percent, thirty-three dollars and twenty-nine cents was printed in Double Masters. So there are some cards here that were printed in Double Masters that are popping up, but really, these drops are very slow. But if they stay consistent, that these cards could drop a decent amount of value. And Linda used to be like a twenty-five dollar card, now it's thirteen dollars sixty-nine. So that's actually a decent drop. And Emrakul the Promise End has lost seven percent just today. So I'd be careful. Maybe he's topping out. Uh, the Immortal Sun has gained up by 2% today, so possibly switching over the cost. But the fact that it moves up and down this fast, this aggressively in one day is still pretty crazy. We are talking about cards here, but people also put them up for prices very, very fast as well. So, Popper, I don't think there's anything to cut. Rhystic Study, Popper card, yes, of course. Um, moving over to spoilers, Abaddon is a spoiler from... <clears throat> Warhammer. I don't think it says which decks, but you got two colors one blue, one black, one red for a 5 5 trample warrior. Astartes warrior. Mark of Chaos Ascendant. During your turn, spells you cast from your hand with mana value X or less have cascade where X is the total amount of life your opponents have lost this turn. Okay, that's trying to keep tabs on two things, but I guess it can be possible. Blood for the Blood God. Eight colorless, one, uh, two black, one red for an instant. For an instant. Ooh, okay. Actually, yeah, that makes sense because of the way that it says it, but that's still insane because of what it does. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature that died this turn. Discard your hand, then draw eight cards. Blood for the Blood God deals eight damage to each opponent. Exile Blood for the Blood God. That's insane you could you could easily kill people with eight damage to three opponents <clears throat> um I, I mean most commander games that i played eight life is pretty normal to be on while you're trying to protect yourself life is a resource at the start so people just use it up, up pretty fast and drawing eight cards and then discarding your hand and then drawing eight cards in these two color combinations really good and cost one less for each creature that died this turn you could easily do that in a counter deck or yeah this is a really really powerful card that could possibly only cost three mana in a lot of times because it's not just your creatures creatures it's all creatures so vanguard suppressor three colors one blue for a three two artes astartes warrior i keep saying that wrong squad two as an additional cost to cast this spell, you may pay two any number of times when this creature enters the battlefield. Create that many tokens that are a copy of it. Okay, that's crazy too. Flying, suppressing fire. When Vanguard Suppressor deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So, six mana gets you three, two, flying. Whenever they deal damage, draw a card. Eight mana. Yeah, it feels, <clears throat> feels okayly costed for what it is. It does feel okay to cost you for what it is. And you got Fabricate. Nice. Two colors, one blue. Search your library for an artifact card. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Pretty cool. So, finishing up. 
we're just going to have a look at the lands. Uh, really not much movement, a big drop off in the last couple of weeks. Now is maybe a good time to buy back in slowly. I've been saying that pretty much pretty consistently. Some people, <clears throat> you don't want to go fast with this kind of stuff unless you really know what's going to happen. Like I was pretty fast in 2020, but I'm not being super fast now. So what I've done is I'm just trying to pick up one once a month. If I see a good deal, so let's have a look. Is there any good deals here? Nope, 399 for lightly played. Yeah. Tiger, any good deals? 341 for lightly played. Probably still not something that's on my list. 758 for lightly played underground seat. Now that's better. That is better for value because underground seas are hard to find lightly played. Volcanic Island. Now this one actually hasn't dropped much at all. 780 for a lightly play. That's crazy. And as you can see, it's flatlined for a long time. So this one is still in quite a bit of demand compared to Underground Sea and some of the other uh, dual lands. So pretty much similar to everything else that's happening in the markets, cars and houses. Depending on what cards you're looking at, they have different values. Uh, sorry, they drop at different rates because people need them for different things. And if you're buying a dual land, a revised dual land that has green in it because you want it for a deck, that's probably not as useful because you can see that this one has dropped quite a bit. I think it's mostly because green is one of the easiest cards to fix. So a lot of people go for that later. But at the same time, that also means you can get a good pickup. 424 for a buyer might still be good value. <clears throat> and the popularity of the decks matter as well. So we can get alpha for five thousand dollars. Crazy. So underground C market price, buy list price, median is probably the best way to go about no, not median. Market price is probably the best. Depending on what the card quality is. Sadly I can't figure that out. So you got underground C topping the market. Then you got Volcanic Island, Tropical Island, Tundra, Bayou, Badlands, Tiger, and Savannah. Wheel of Fortune, <clears throat> Scrublands, Plateau, and so on and so forth. Now, the way that normally works is if you can find a likely plate that's below this market price, you're doing pretty well because this is the average for all of the cards. So if you're finding a, you know, a good quality likely played one for this price or lower, then you're doing pretty well. But truthfully, even this is on the high side, maybe I'll look for this one. But you don't want to lower yourself too much because sometimes you might miss the opportunities. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, actually, I did want to give an update. I tried to do a recording of a video yesterday. I was playing Age of Mythology and I was just talking. It was really hard. So I'm going to get some practice in before I start making any videos of me playing any games, which requires me to talk and think at the same time. Or maybe I need to move on to first person shooters or <clears throat> a game that's a bit more slow paced. But even like Factorio or Age of Mythology, I just feel like it does require a lot of thinking and I just freeze when I start getting into that pattern. Anyways, thanks for watching and have a good day. See you guys.